The results are in loss of civil liberties, empowerment to the executive branch. We go from a republic to an empire, repeating history and fulfilling biblical prophecy. So what history are we repeating and what biblical prophecies are being fulfilled? Let's take a look at the Rome-America connection. I firmly believe that America is the revived Roman Empire. Check it out. Rome was symbolized by the great eagle, as is the United States of America. Also in Rome you will find the dome and the obelisk, just like you find in Washington, D.C. Romans have senators, Americans have senators. In Rome there were the chariot races. In America we've got NASCAR. Romans had the gladiators. We've got ultimate fighting. Also, one of the main things is this. They went from a republic form of government to an empire. And that's exactly what's happening in America. In 49 BC, Julius Caesar and his army crossed the Rubicon River, bound for Rome. He defeated his rivals and took complete power. He said he was saving the republic from disorder, but his actions began Rome's transition from republic to empire. The Roman Republic was distressed There was corruption and things were a mess With Caesar's rule, things started to change Till the Republic was gone and an empire remained The days of the Republic were gone As an empire grown grew more strong No, I've, I've always, you know, a dictatorship would be a heck of a lot easier. There's no question about it. I had planned another closing message, but I feel compelled to say what I'm about to say. Now, I risk sounding like a conspiracy theorist, but it's no longer a theory. What I'm about to say is fact. The secret organizations of the world power elite are no longer secret. They have planned and are now leading us into a one-world communist government. The combining of national governments started with the European Union. That union started with trade agreements, then a common currency, the euro, and now a European parliament that is feverishly passing laws that uh, override the laws of, num of the member nations. A constitution was drafted but rejected by a few uh, of those nations. But never mind, they implemented it anyway. Now it's North America's turn. Building on the North American Free Trade Agreement, the NAFTA section of the Commerce Department is busy drafting laws and regulations for a North American Union, a union of Canada, America, and Mexico. The President has attended secret meetings and signed at least two agreements under the Security and Prosperity Partnership Program. Huh? North American Union? Hang on a sec. Allow me to clarify. The New World Order plan is to divide the Earth into ten geopolitical regions, thereby making nations, borders, and ethnic separation obsolete. The stated purpose is to bring an end to war and poverty and to provide security and prosperity for the global community. Yeah, there's a lot of obstacles to this kind of global unity, but these folks are smart. They've learned that if you institute a common currency, you break down barrier after barrier until you homogenize and unify these different nations. I think one thing people who are dollar-based need to focus on is the Amero. That's the one thing that nobody's talking about that I think is going to have a big impact on, uh, on everybody's life in Canada, the U.S., and uh, Mexico. If you Google it, you'll find out all about it. Well, you could tell us a little bit more right now. You always hear it on CNBC, don't you? <laughs> the Amero is the proposed new currency for the North American community, which is being uh, developed right now between Canada, the U.S., and Mexico to make a borderless community, much like the EU, and uh, the dollar, Canadian dollar, U.S. dollar, and the Mexican peso replaced by the Amero. We will have a new currency, the Amero, and a new constitution. Our rights will not be inalienable, but they will be granted by government who can also take them away. The Bush administration is pushing and pushing hard. A partnership between the United States and Mexico and Canada with a goal of what it calls integration by 2010. 
This partnership among three nations is being discussed at the highest levels of the three governments at the urging of the largest multinational corporations. But it is barreling ahead with absolutely no congressional oversight, no voter approval, out of sight completely of the American people, and as far as we can determine, without any constitutional authority whatsoever.